Okay, my name is Frank Salem, and I'm a professor of entomology and extension entomologist here at UC Davis. Um, I've been at UC Davis for 34 years now. Uh, 16 of those years, I was director of the UC statewide integrated pest management program. Uh, I got my bachelor's degree and master's degree from Arizona State University in ecology, and I got my PhD from UC Davis. Uh, my research and extension is in tree crops and small fruits. First of all, I'd like to describe uh, the opportunities for IPM in an orchard cropping system. Uh, orchard crops are a perennial system, so they're a lot more stable, provides more of an opportunity to think long-term and strategically. Uh, this could result in a system then where you uh, have less reliance on pesticides. And to me, the goal of IPM is to try to use uh, fewer pesticides, and when you use them, to use them more uh, uh, strategically. There's a lot of benefits from uh, reduced use of pesticides. Uh, there's less chance of insecticide resistance developing. Uh, there's more environmental benefits from uh, reduced insecticide use. And there's a lot more, uh, less likelihood of having uh, secondary pests. And secondary pests are those that are uh, usually not pests in a, in a system, but are often the result of disruption from uh, uh, different types of practices like using an insecticide. In effect, using IPM in an in a orchard crop system uh, provides a more healthy and stable crop. Uh, this provides a healthier environment, and it also uh, uh, provides more predictable uh, outcomes uh, when you do make pest management decisions. So you asked me about the, uh, what are some of the strengths of IPM. Well, to me, IPM is really uh, involves observation and information that you gather, and this allows for more informed uh, pest management decisions to be made. Uh, also, because you're out in the field and making observations and more systematically uh, monitoring the crop, you also have more familiarity with what's going on in the crop. And so I think it d doesn't only help with pest management systems, but it also helps with uh, just better horticultural uh, decisions as well. And potentially that's going to uh, improve uh, the quality of the crop and reduce input costs. Also, the information that you gather from uh, monitoring allows more strategic decisions to be made, uh, uh, and, and also decisions that are more preventative types of decisions. So they could be things, uh, by preventative, I mean not just preventative uh, insecticides, which we think of, but, uh, but primarily uh, cultural controls. Perhaps there's types of cultural controls that you can do to reduce uh, the pests long term and therefore uh, the significance of having to make insecticide applications. You know, what are the challenges to using IPM? Well, again, IPM is more information intensive, but it also requires knowledge of uh, the biology of the pests, the biology of beneficial organisms in the crop. It requires uh, a lot of knowledge about horticultural production as well. Um, Challenges to IPM is that it's really more labor intensive in that it requires uh, people to go out into the field, uh, monitor the, the uh, pests, monitor the status of the crop. Another challenge for IPM is that it requires faith in making the right decision. And this is especially the case when you're making a decision not to spray. And that's one of the, the important uh, aspects of IPM is that uh, it's not just making a decision to take an action, but it's also the opportunity to make a decision not to take an action, especially a spray decision. For most people, there's a tendency to uh, avoid risk, and this is true for growers, for consultants, even uh, folks like myself. I, I really don't like to take a lot of risks. And, and so it's easy to make a spray decision because uh, it's a way of avoiding risk and also getting uh, uh, positive feedback immediately from that decision. So there's a tendency to avoid risk and taking no action uh, can be viewed as risky. Okay, another challenge for IPM is uh, the lack of support for IPM uh, in terms of development 
uh, of IPM practices and promotion of IPM. Uh, since IPM isn't put into a bottle and sold, there's not much infrastructure for IPM like there would be for a commercial product. Commercial products are, are, uh, can be uh, produced and sold. Uh, IPM is really more about information and knowledge. What are the weaknesses of IPM? Uh, IPM might cost more near term and also uh, there's a lack of immediate feedback, uh, positive feedback for people that use IPM. An example is uh, uh, putting on a preventative sp spray for uh, a pest. Uh, preventative spraying can make people feel good because uh, you think you're avoiding risk, uh, you can actually see the insects die. Uh, the, the, and also there's a temptation for using the very cheapest uh, pesticides that will provide a positive uh, feedback or reinforcement for, for the action. Uh, one of the good examples that I've seen is the increasing use of uh, pyrethroids in orchard crop systems. Pyrethroids are cheap and effective, uh, and but they also destroy the balance that could be created in a in a uh, orchard crop system. So they all of a sudden you've created a lot of instability in that system long term. It takes a long time for uh, beneficials to be reintroduced into orchard crop systems and for them to become established and effective again after a pyrethroid spray. So the advantage of IPM in orchard systems is creating the uh, type of system that's a more stable system, uh, hopefully one where there's fewer uh, insecticides that need, need to be used, and uh, so that long term uh, we can avoid problems that are caused by insecticide use like insecticide resistance and secondary pest outbreaks and a lot more benefits uh, in terms of a healthier uh, environment.